That's thanks for helping me hit my funding goal. I will be providing a story, a creepy horror story, in the voice of Kylo Ren. Now, this particular story is called The Cinematographer. It's a little urban legend passed amongst the stormtroopers, but anyway, this is the tale. The paranormal was something that the three of us, referring to three individuals within the story, felt that they were beyond. They all liked to think of themselves as educated, but when they got into arguments, they felt near invincible. But when Martin, one of the three, insisted we fuck around with his fat older brother's laptop full of occult pictures and documents, and when he promised to involve some of his best, his best herbs, the three of us decided to meet up in John's basement, our hallowed smoking ground. After a couple of bowls, the three of them began to stare into the glow of the computer screen, clicking through folders enabled demons, rituals, life, ritual strength, hexes, phasing, lucid dreaming. Every folder was full of sketchy Polaroid pictures of pale figures with twisted triangular faces and fingers like twigs, long pieces of text containing foreign languages and symbols, and intricate diagrams for sigils and sacrifices. It was something mind-bending for a group of three stoned 17-year-olds. They found a project in the folder labeled Summoning. It contained a plethora of pictures and diagrams for calling things to this world from hell, from other dimensions, from something that one image referred to as the else, and they picked at random to mess around with that one and laugh through it. The diagram called for very little preparation. They only needed the light, some incense, and to say an obscure incantation all in a language that none of them had ever heard. The entity that the diagram described lived in some place referred to as over the wall, and tons of red text littered the picture. It all warned of dealing with the entity of its numerous powers, and it included short accounts of the lives it had ruined, including a rather disturbing one about a woman whose guts it had removed and played with, and a few more involved figures without eyes found wandering the scene of the summoning. The thing was a curious being, but impatient. It liked stalking the humans that summoned it, watching them, observing them, before it would grow more malicious and start taking them, experimenting on them and driving them to do things for it, seeing whatever made them squeal or cry or bleed. They set everything up, and John volunteered to read off the screen. Let me tell you that John fumbled through that language with gusto. It was the highlight of the night. They laughed through the whole thing, with John tripping over words and destroying some with his own chuckles. Even when Martin put his hands up to settle them down, the Snickers would get through and flare back into laughter. It was at that point that a third of them decided to pull out his camera. It had become their tradition to film these basement sessions, and John was apparently going for an Academy Award. They gave up on the laptop after the camera came out. They were quite bored, and John was running out of words to read eventually. They all started passing the camera around and speaking into it directly, doing it... Hmm much like a documentary, so they'd say something intelligent, revelatory or funny, and then pass the camera on. It was a way of documenting the indispensable hilarity that they planned to look at on the next day. The night passed quickly, and a third of them remembers turning on the TV, and at some point, Martin and him packed up the laptop and walked back to his house so John could pass out on his couch. 
but events leaked in and out of memory after the night in question. The next morning he woke up to find his phone full of unread texts and missed calls, all from John. The gist of the messages was, get your ass over here, and the voice delivering the voicemails was in that of the easy stoner that he was used to dealing with. No, he spoke in unconnected short clips, a lopsided train of thought. Found it downstairs for fun, you know, I was supposed to, just thought I'd found it. And the camera to see, you need to see this, it's supposed to be fun, just get over here, get over here please. John sounded completely stern, almost lifeless, something that set a million alarm bells off. In his head, he went to find Martin, who had also gotten a phone full of messages, and they both returned to John's house. They found him upstairs in the television room. He'd hooked up the camera left over from last night and was watching what had been recorded, pausing and fast-forwarding, stopping every now and then to watch. Martin and him crept into the room and took places quietly on the couch. They didn't want to interrupt him. The footage played on as much as they remembered happening, and as he watched John recite the incantations coming from his mouth, they sounded entirely made up, yet rhythmic like poems from some other country. In the video, they'd been laughing and cracking up, and the sound of giggles and laughter bounced around the room. But watching it again made him feel strange, like he was seeing or he and hearing something that he shouldn't be, almost like a snuff film. He looked at Martin and then to John, and John's stone face and Martin's mouth slightly agape, and the feeling that he was watching something forbidden made him feel like it had been a mistake to record the previous night. Eventually, this fellow asked John what was up, why he had called them and why he seemed so somber, and he gave a cold answer, a knowing answer. Keep watching, he said. And so they did. The night on the tape played out, filling in memory gaps here and there as it played, and ran to the point where they started talking to the camera and passing it around. John looked as though he'd snap on either of us at any moment, so he didn't dare ask what they were looking for. Finally, in the video, he saw himself pass the camera off, and John hit the pause button. See? See? Well? John alternated a stare almost accusingly between where Martin and the third fellow were watching and to the TV screen itself. He glanced at Martin, referring to the third fellow this time, and shook his head. I wonder why we never know his name. On the screen, we were all sitting together on John's couch, throwing up rock and roll devil horns with their hands, stoned out of their minds. And it was then that he received a little bit of a revelation. He stared at the image for a few fruitless seconds, and then the realization hit him like a train. He saw what John had called them over to see and it made him feel nauseous. John said it before he could. If we're all on the couch, who's holding the camera? And that is a rather creepy story that you have earned for supporting my streams and my family. We hope that you enjoyed it and don't worry, there will be more in future.